Hi and welcome back again. So today's video is going to be about the investigation process when you are performing a forensics analysis of some evidence, digital evidence by the way. So this is today's video and I guess let's the fun begin. So I guess the first the first picture is this picture here that it looks like the victim was brutally sliced into multiple pieces. And basically you kind of need to be aware of your skills. You need to to know that you are looking for the real clues and not, you know, some brick wall that, you know, looks like it was the well, the bricks that caused the damage. So I guess this 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 this, this picture kind of proves the point that you have to be aware of the fact that forensics is a difficult task. It is actually a lot more you know, difficult to do good forensics as opposed to, you know, learn a new programming language or something like that. So just to say it that, you know, there's a lot of things you need to, you know, be aware of and and take that into your consideration. The process overview itself contains these different steps, you know, and we can, you know, just briefly uh, look at them and I'm gonna talk about them um, individually here and there. So early tasks, who perform the investigation, identification of items of interest, preservation of evidence through chain of custody, collection, taking control legally, of course that is very important. You may need a warrant. Examination, that is the time consuming part. <laughs> Analysis, that might be fully documented. Presentation in some sort of courtroom, it could be like a, in a, as like an expert witness. witness. That is, uh, I think it's, uh, I don't know if there's a Danish term for that, but it's, it's an American term saying like, um, that if you're an expert witness, you of course do have some sort of, you know, precedence in the court. So and decision, trial, sometimes by jury. So that is the overall process view we're gonna talk about today. So <clears throat> early tasks, will there be an investigation? Not all incidents require an investigation. That is that is very true because sometimes um, it is it is so easy to see that, you know, uh, this was caused by for example, natural disaster, or it was just an unintentional, you know, mistake. It could be that the the person actually standing saying, I tripped, I fell, I, you know, I did <laughs> hit the wire, you know, I, I did um, cause the computer to do something, you know, because I hit the keyboard in the way, I'm very sorry, it was intentional, just, you know, putting the arms up in the air and saying, was I, you know, I don't really, no need to do it, of course. Um, so, <clears throat> but the most important part is to, to keep your mind open. Not every incident require a true investigation. Sometimes you also have to be aware of that it could be a cover up, that someone is trying to cover for something or someone else. So that is also something you have to be aware of. <clears throat> who will perform the investigation? So, yeah, who will do that? Um, there are different types of forensic tasks, by the way. So you gotta pick a person who's capable of performing this type of investigation. Um, if you are p picking the wrong person, then you might put the wrong person into jail. So it is very important that you take this task very serious because yeah, I know you're programming some fancy pantsy, you know, web application or for system or something or whatever. And it's very important that the security is implemented. I agree with you, but I would rather see a brute force attack being successful uh, than a um, a person being put to jail. It can have a profound impact on on a person's life, the families, the kids, the wives, if um, a person is put to jail, even the husbands as well not implying that it's only men doing criminal because it is definitely not only men, it is definitely both genders. And I'm just saying that um, you need to be aware of that um, if the wrong person is put to the job, there is a slight chance that you know something is missed and or misunderstood. That is really difficult um, to um, save up, you know, to catch in the court. So that is also why I need to pick the right person. 
also need to do identification of items of interest on laptop, desktop, USB device, cables, you know, anything of interest that could have some sort of, you know, um, data on it that could be <clears throat> used in the actual investigation. So I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes um, the last one, like what about other cables and notebooks? Sometimes people do write something down, you know, on, on, on post-its or on, on the back of a cup, you know, just take my son's cup <laughs> on the back of that could be some sort of, you know, note, who knows, you know, it's, it's just the imagination. So have every, every center out whenever you're collecting your items of interest. Preservation of evidence through chain of custody basically means that you will maintain the control of evidence from the time you seize it until the time is used in court, and you must make sure that the evidence is not tampered with. So, yeah, it's very important. Um, if you cannot uh, prove that the evidence had not been tampered with, and the easiest way to do that is it's basically to, to do a checksum of whatever data you're, you're performing an analysis on, and that checksum have to be the same every time. So whenever you, you hand over your evidence to another guy, you say, please do checksum, for example, on that piece of data, and then just write it down. And when you're in court and the, the prosecutor or whoever is gonna say it, say like, oh, the evidence is tampered with, and they probably will say that, and you know, if, <laughs> if <they laughs> why not, I guess. Then you have to be able to prove it, and basically that is the way it's, um, so collecting, um, it's like taking control legally. It's important that you take control of the evidence legally. If you collect the evidence illegally, you will more likely not be able to use the evidence in court. So you need to be able to like, um, uh, I'm gonna say that legally, it, it is illegal to go and take a person's, you know, private belongings if it's not a part of the actual investigation because you might know that there's a really good chance that if you get into the, the person's home and you can you can you can you know grab whatever things they have there's, there's a good, really good chance that there's a clue there but if it's not a part of the investigation you don't have access to it legally you know it is generally a really bad idea so you need to have some sort of warrant you know in order to to get access to that the examination part is, is what it takes, you know, the most of the time. So uh, basically, um, a digital investigation or forensics investigation is looking at, you know, a very large amount of data in some cases. And but in most cases, you do something called sniper forensics, which is basically you aim for the the exact clue. So you do some like an overall forensics examination, say like, hey, what do we have here? Like, is it is it like your speed stuff going on? Do we have deletion of data, what is the person, you know, accused for doing? And this is what you're gonna try and find out because you are hired to do a job and sometimes you you will find stuff. Okay, so let's assume that you, it, it, it's it's some woman who deleted some, some files and, 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 and basically, um, and basically you, 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 did you find, you know, that something else was downloaded to that computer? Let's say some illegal material were downloaded, but that is not a part of the actual, you know, case, what you do. So that is a very interesting question. I cannot give you any answer because that is up to the agreement, the papers, the policies and everything that you are working under. You have to be fully documented uh, whenever you do stuff, uh, analysis of Everything is very important. So basically, um, document all your findings. If you forget something, it cannot be used in court because you haven't documented it. Presentation uh, in a court as an expert witness. Um, you need to be able to testify. And if you testify wrong, you know if you don't say the truth, you can be you can be um, prosecuted for that, and that is of course very bad. So it's very important that you do your job very well as an expert witness. A decision, a trial is sometimes done by a jury and you will have no real impact on that, you know, it's just up to them. So you can look at the NIST forensics timeline, for example, to see how do this, could the process look like and basically collecting examination, analysis, reporting, and there are different, you know, step-by-step -step model. I, I, it's okay, you know, I, I think there's also, um, 
Let me just see if we can. Yeah, let me just get through it. So we're also collecting evidence after an incident. Forensic analysis involves gathering and processing evidence gathered after some incident, like photographic areas, record what's on the screen, dump your RAM data, the volatile, of course, label each piece of evidence, record who collected what and how, and so on. So that is very important that you do collect it in a you know professional manner. Using proven methods is also very um, it's a very important part that you do like collecting, preservation, validation, identification, analysis, interpretation, documentation, presentation of detailed evidence. So using a proving method is what you're really gonna do and if you follow the guidance lines. If you do not follow them, well, there's a good chance you cannot use your evidence in court. And there is a slide, you know, list here. I, I know I'm going through this slideshow a bit quick, but it's, I think most of it is uh, self-explanatory if you're watching this video about forensics. This is by no means a, a 101 forensics, uh, you know, video. I, I, I make these for those who um, know something already. So. Use layman terms, language when presenting. I guess that is the most important part in this that I would like to say. Um, of course, follow checklist back practices. Um, do that, be prepared and, well, make sure that you, you describe it well enough. A sample investigation timeline could be like this. Then you, you have a timeline saying different dates that when something happened and it could be could just be like that. So So basically this is just an example of something that happened from the 4th of January to the 4th of February. So that is in one month time duration of a, of a, of a of an investigation time so that is from the past. And this was kind of kind of all just what I want to say in this uh, quick 10 minutes ish time. The investigation process of a forensics um, investigation. There are of course many different, you know, um, ways you can do this but in the end you have to follow the rules you have to make sure that you are uh, you having your law in your back so whenever you do something it is legally allowed you have the evidence collected in a professional manner you have them labeled you document what you have if you if you intercept um, well not intercept but if you if you contaminate the data in some way you have to document it and there are some some ways where intentional contamination of data is necessary. For example, if you have to collect volatile data, when you do that, you plug a USB stick into the machine. It has to be live, it has to be open. Um, you will contaminate it in some way. You have to document it with the USB stick or the portal device you're using, the VIN, the PID, the product event ID. You have to document everything about it. So whenever you are uh, doing the real uh, examination of your data, afterwards, of course, then you will be aware of that maybe something maybe something could be deleted because you collected the volatile data, which is also why there is a slide should delete it or not, depending on well, I think you should always collect volatile data. So basically, I guess that's it. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumb up and until next time, just gonna say take care.